Good morning to all of you. I will discuss our lesson for today which is about inductive and deductive reasoning. Mathematical reasoning enables us to use all other mathematical skills. With mathematical reasoning, we recognize that mathematics is indispensable, that it makes sense and it can be understood. We then learn how to evaluate situations opt for appropriate problem-solving strategies, draw logical conclusions, develop and describe solutions, and identity when those solutions can be applied. Mathematical reasoners are able to reflect on solutions to problems and determine whether or not they make sense. Then, students can appreciate the all-encompassing use and influence of reasoning as part of mathematics. Let us first define the inductive reasoning and the deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is the process of reaching a general conclusion by examining specific examples. Today's formal theorems and proofs originated with these two forms of reasoning. In inductive reasoning, likewise, refers to the process of making generalized decisions after observing or witnessing repeated specific instances of something. On the other hand, deductive reasoning refers to the process of taking the information gathered from general observations and making specific decisions based on that information. Mathematicians are still using these types of reasoning to discover new mathematical theorems and proofs. Deductive starts with theory and passes through an observation and then arrive at the confirmation. Whereas the inductive reasoning starts with data and then conclusions from inferences or from observations or experimentations and arrive at the general accepted truth or what we call the theory. A conclusion reached by inductive reasoning may or may not be valid. The conclusions reached by deductive reasoning are correct and valid. Inductive reasoning is used to form hypotheses, while deductive reasoning is used to prove ideas. So another, this is the diagram for inductive reasoning and for deductive reasoning. So for deduction, started from theory, then followed by hypothesis, observation, and then confirmation or affirmation of the theory presented. In the induction, it starts from observation, then go to pattern, tentative hypothesis, and then arriving at a theory or a conjecture. What do mathematicians say about deductive and inductive reasoning. Deduction gets you to a perfect conclusion, but only if all your premises are 100% correct. Deduction moves from theory to experiment to validation, when induction moves from observation to generalization to theory. Deduction is harder to use outside of laboratory or science settings, because it's often hard to find a set of fully agreed upon facts to structure the argument. Induction is used constantly because it's a great tool for everyday problems that deal with partial information about our world and coming up with usable conclusions that may not be right in all cases. So therefore, in inductions, not all conclusions can be accepted because those may not be right in all circumstances. Number five, be willing to use both types of reasoning to solve problems and know that they can often be used together cyclically as a pair. For example, use induction to come up with a theory and then use deduction to determine if it's actually true. The main thing to avoid with these two is arguing with the force of deduction that is guaranteed to be true. 
while actually using induction, the probability is based on the strength of evidence. Here are some examples of inductive reasoning. Number one, we have here, John is an excellent swimmer. John's family has a swimming pool. Then, therefore, we conclude that John's sister, Mary, must also be an excellent swimmer. So, with this example, it's up to you if the conclusion or the conjecture is acceptable or accepted to be true. Number two, Elijah is good-looking. Elijah is well-behaved. Therefore, all good-looking are well-behaved. So, we can see here that the conclusion is based on the premises, but we can say that the conclusions the conclusion is not always true. Number three, the coin pulled from a bag is a penny. A second coin from the bag is a penny. Therefore, all the coins in the bag are pennies. Number, next number, children in the daycare center are playful. Children in the daycare center like to play with Legos. Therefore, playful children like to play with Legos. For deductive reasoning, we have the general theory which says all numbers ending in 0 or 5 are divisible by 5. The number 35 ends with a 5, so this is the observation. And your conclusion, therefore, or confirmation, therefore 35 is divisible by 5, so this is true. Next is all squares are rectangle. All rectangles have four sides, therefore, all squares have four sides. And there are all other examples for deductive reasoning like those that are stated in number three and number four. So when deductive reasoning is stated first the theory or the accepted truth, the other statements are accepted also to be true. So we have here some examples of reasoning and let us identify whether it is a deduction or induction. We have all cats have a keen sense of smell. Floppy is a cat, so Floppy has a keen sense of smell. So since the statement starts with all, so it is a general statement, therefore it is a deductive reasoning. Number two, every time you eat peanuts, your throat swells up and you can breathe. This is a symptom of people who are allerg allergic to peanuts. So, you are allergic to peanuts. You are st you started from the observation and then you have the conclusion that when you eat peanuts, you have or you get an allergy, therefore you are allergic to peanuts. Therefore, it is an inductive reasoning. And these are also other examples of reasoning. Ray is a football player. All football players weigh more than 170 pounds. Ray weighs more than 170 pounds. That is an inductive. It started from the specific statement and arriving at the general statement. Since all squares are rectangles and all rectangles have four sides, so all squares have four sides. Okay, that is a deductive reasoning. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. That is a deductive. All cars in this town drive on the right side of the street. Therefore, all cars in all towns drive on the right side of the street. That is an inductive reasoning. So, when we apply inductive reasoning in number pattern, we have this 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And what is the next number? If we are asked to find the 19th term, so the, la the following number is 2n. The 19th term because all these numbers are even numbers and even numbers are divisible by 2. So to find the 19th term, that is 2 times n. 2 times n equals 19 for finding the 19th term times 2 equals 38. Next, we have here another pattern 3, 6, 12, 24. So we can see that all these numbers are multiples of 3. So we have the first number 3. 
3 times 2 equals 6, which is also the second number. Then, to find the third number, maybe we can multiply 6 by 2, which is 12. And then, we got 24 by multiplying 12 by 2. Then, what's the next number after 24? So, that is 24 times 2 is 48. And then, next number is 48 times 2, which is 96. And maybe, the next number after 96 is 96 times 2 is 192. Another example for deductive reasoning, prove QUAD is a parallelogram. How can you prove that? So, to find uh, the parallelogram, uh, there should be two sides which are parallel. So, all sides must be parallel. So, we prove that QD is parallel with UA and also QU is parallel with DA. Therefore, if these statements are all true, then QUAD is a parallelogram. So, that is about inductive and deductive reasoning. So, we can, we can see that in inductive reasoning, we draw general principles from specific instances, while in deductive reasoning, it draws a specific conclusion from general principles or premises. A premise is a previous statement or proposition from which another is inferred as follows as a conclusion. Unlike inductive reasoning, which always involves uncertainty, the conclusions from deductive inference are certain provided the premises are true. Scientists use inductive reasoning to formulate hypotheses and theories, and deductive reasoning when applying them to specific situations. Even if all of the premises are true in a statement, inductive reasoning may still yield false conclusions. So those are for deductive and inductive reasoning. Thank you very much.